Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. My name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. I have on the keyboard um, my friend Angelo Juris. So as we're going through, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them out there and we will try and answer those for you. So today's topic, um, we're gonna be creating part of this guy. This is a patio lamp I took off my neighbor's house because I thought it looked really cool. Um, actually, just kidding. Um, I'm installing this in, in our back patio. Um, but as I was looking at this, I was like, man, it'd be kind of cool to model that thing up. But how would I go about creating like this cage that you see? Um, it's got some, some character to it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, in fact, just for fun, I'll show you um, kind of on a side note, we're remodeling our whole backyard. Um, and so I'm started to model the deck. I'm not finished with it yet. I still need to do the railings, but this is all done in Fusion. And the rest of this I just did with photogrammetry. So I walked around my backyard and you can see it's like, you know, there are still piles of dirt and piles of rock and stuff like that. They're working on a rock wall over here and stuff, but that patio light's actually gonna go end up going on this uh, back wall right here. So that's the, the basis of this project. So. Um, today we're going to do the cage and the glass, um, and then on the next session we'll start doing some of the sheet metal part. Now I am um, going to say that I didn't model this for manufacturing. Now some of it is sheet metal and we'll talk about that, but like this cage right now, these are solid bars, but in reality they're hollow and I'll show you how you could model this for manufacturability. Um, but in this example, I'm going to be doing it more for rendering. In fact, here's a completed render. Um, we'll talk about you know how did I get the light bulb in there? How does it cast the light? You know how did we get these bubbles on the glass? That's kind of the whole idea behind this project. Okay, so let's dive right in. I just realized I haven't uploaded the outline into the um, YouTube video yet, but um, very quickly after this, I will do that. So if you want to follow along in the outline, um, you can do that. So we're going to start by creating that cage. And before I do anything, I like to create things as components because it keeps things organized very easily. So I'm going to just call this cage. <laughs> and you can see now we have an active component. And then I'm gonna kind of create sort of like a skeleton of the whole thing. So something that kind of defines the overall shape of it. Um, and in this case, it's just basically a large rectangular extrusion. So I'm gonna do a center rectangle. And here's a cool little tip. Now this is gonna be a square, but obviously I'm drawing a rectangle, but I want it to end up being square. So I'm just going to type in one dimension. So I'm going to hit four and then hit enter. Then I can come in and say, I want these two lines to be equal with each other. And I only have one dimension on here. So if I were to change that to you know be two, obviously that would change to be two. So instead of having to put another dimension over here, typing in four and then having to change both of them, we just create basically um, one dimension and whatever this line is, that line has to be equal to it. Okay, also I'm starting right at the origin. That's really gonna help me out because we're gonna do some mirroring and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and extrude this guy up um, nine inches. So here's kind of my base shape. What we're going to end up doing is we're actually going to use the pipe command. Now in the pre in the thumbnail that comes up, it kind of shows, you know, a circle being swept along a spline and stuff like that. But one of the cool things is the pipe command will also do sharp corners. And obviously this is going to have a lot of sharp corners. So now I'm going to basically start creating the locations of these lines that you see, you know, like where this sorry, <laughs> where this line is, where this line is, these bars, etc. So I'm going to basically split the box um, using planes and we're going to um, use offset planes to do that. So under the construct menu, 
offset plane. I already had a face selected, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm gonna say offset plane, I'll click this top face, and this will allow me to offset a plane a particular distance. So in this case, I wanna go down, so I'm gonna say minus 1.35 in this case. I'll do the same thing, and I'll go up 1.35. So I basically created those guys there. I also want to turn on my origin. And this is gonna be really useful. It's kind of buried in this block. In fact, I'm gonna open up my component here so I can very quickly and easily turn on or off the body. Um, I also want to offset for those two vertical bars. They're kind of offset a little bit. And I can see the plane right here, but you'll notice it's not letting me click on it. But I will click and hold over it. So I'm clicking my left mouse button for about a second, and it's gonna probe through. So the first thing is that face, the next thing it hit was that plane, then it hit another plane right there. So I'm going to click on that, and I was able to pick that plane that's kind of buried inside that part without having to turn the part on or off. Um, oops, so I'm going to do 0.6 to the right, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. It's kind of kind of hard to see, but there's the middle, there's that 0.6. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the left side, so I'm going to pick that plane, and I'll do uh, minus 0.6 in this case. Okay, now here's a cool tip. Now you don't have to do this in this case, but You'll notice like these planes are very small because they were referencing that small origin plane. I want them to be bigger. So I'm gonna turn off my body and you can grab the corner like so and drag up. And I'll do the same thing with this guy here. I'll just grab um, that corner there. I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit and then I can turn the body back on and we can see now that I can move this plane up and over. So now I can visually see that it's slicing through the whole part. And I'll do the same thing with this guy. Let me just bring it up a little bit. And, oops, this corner and over. Now here's a new tip that I didn't know. I just learned this recently. I've always shown that you can change the size of the plane by grabbing the corner, but you can also, it's really hard to see, but when I hover over this edge, it kind of turns blue, and I can actually change the size of my plane just by grabbing edges. I don't have to do the corner, per se. I find the corners faster, but there might be some situations where you just want to um, move the edge, like this guy here. I'm just gonna pull that edge down. I'm just gonna pull that edge down, for example. Kind of a cool, quick way to change the size of your construction planes. So now you can kind of see we're starting to define where these bars are gonna go. But I wanna use these planes to basically imprint their location onto this rectangular box. And to do that, I'm going to use split face. Now, 99% of the time, I'm always using split body. I want to split it into um, you know, two separate parts. Split face only splits the face and keeps it all one body. Let me show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to click on split face. What are the faces to split? I'm just going to draw a box around the whole thing. I want to, I want to basically split every, all six faces. What's my splitting tool? Okay, well, the very first one I'm gonna click is actually buried. I'm gonna click this front plane, that guy, because it's gonna create an edge right there. Now, I can also come in and select all of these other planes. So I'm gonna grab these other construction planes. So we're basically grabbing the front plane, that's kind of buried inside and then all these other construction planes. When I say okay, it does this to my box. But notice when I expand open the body, 
it is still one body. It's not 12 separate little blocks that it would have been um, with, you know, if I had done this split body. So split face is actually a pretty cool command. It's almost like imprints or etches the line. In fact, I'll come in here and turn off my construction. I really don't need that anymore. Now I have some edges that we can use to create these pipe commands. So I'll go to create pipe. I'm going to move the menu in case the video or anything is covering it up. It's asking for a path. Now here's the one little drawback with pipe is you'll notice as I hover over this edge right here even though chain is turned on it's only clicking that one edge because it's being broken by these edges here so I'm gonna click there and it gives me a preview and then I'm gonna control click there control click that line okay so what is it doing well it's going the full distance, we can see that as one. We can see this section is circular, which is kind of the shape of a pipe, right? Well, you can also do square or triangular. And in this case, I'm gonna do square. Then it's asking for the, the size. And you can see right now it's set to one. I'm gonna say 0.4, and we get a smaller representation of that. And then you notice it says cut. Well, I'm going to say, I don't want it to cut. I want that to be a new body. And what we're basically doing, if you can kind of think of it this way, is we're taking a square profile and extruding it or sweeping it along a path. We also have the option, if I wanted to, to make it hollow. And so this is where I was talking about earlier. You know, if, if I wanted to do this for manufacturing, I would make all of these hollow because that's what they are in real life. But just for the rendering, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Maybe we'll come back in a future session and change our existing design um, quickly and easily to make it for, easier for manufacturing. So I'm going to leave it like so and say OK. Now I'm just going to repeat that. What's my path? I'm going to select these three lines, change that to new body. I'll say OK. I'm going to repeat that again. I want to do a square all the way around the top. So I'm going to click these lines. And here's where the magic really happens. So I'm going to select these four edges there. And you can see it's set to cut. Let me change it to new body. It's actually going all the way around. I didn't have to do a sweep. I didn't have to create four separate profiles and extrude them along the edge. It's basically creating a pipe for me. I'm going to repeat that. Let's do the bottom edges. Now the keen-eyed ones of you, you're probably noticing that some of these parts are overlapping and stuff. That's okay. We're going to fix that here in a moment. So I now have that. Now there's two of these on the back side also. I could use the pipe command and just select the lines or because I started with a center rectangle my origin is right in the middle. right? So I could come in here and say let's mirror. I don't want to mirror faces. I want to mirror well, I could mirror bodies or I could mirror features. It really doesn't matter in this case. I'll say features. I'm going to select um, not that guy. Let me do this one and this one. What's my mirror plane? Now, again, I, I can't click on it. Oh, that's good. I don't have any viruses or <laughs> um, go away. Okay. I can't click on this, but if I click and hold, it'll let me probe through. I can grab that origin. And I really show that because you don't know how many times I see um, people coming over here and turning things on and off so they can select or whatever. And you can do that, but as things get more complicated, 
you have to remember what what's the part name and all this kind of stuff. I just like clicking and probing through. Okay, so we've done the front and the back. I'll use the pipe command again. And this time we're gonna kind of wrap around. Now we're not gonna go through the middle, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna click here, here, here. And now here's a neat little trick. Because I'm selecting a path, I don't even have to rotate around. I can actually kind of just move my cursor and it's gonna find the next path, which is on the back side. So I'm gonna click there. We'll say new body. I'll say okay repeat my last command and I'm just repeating my last command by right clicking and dragging straight up and that's gonna repeat the last command that you did which in this case is the pipe command this is called a gesture um, in fact let me let me kinda of show that real quick If I just right click and drag straight up you can see it's repeating the last command Okay. in fact kinda of go a little bit more advanced if I right mouse click, notice it's 6 o'clock, it says sketch. And then if I hover over sketch for a little bit, I get this sketch menu. And you'll notice at like 2 o'clock is rectangle, 10 o'clock is circle, 6 o'clock is line. So check this out. I can just go down and to 2 o'clock, I'm in my rectangle command. I could go down and 10 o'clock, and I'm in my circle command. I could go just straight down and I'm in my line command. So it's just a quick shortcut way to get to some of those commands. As you get even better, you can see there's like offset, project, etc. Or undo, redo, and sometimes left is okay and right is cancel or something like that. So those are called gestures. So um, so I'm going to, since I did the line command, I now have to come back and say pipe. I'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to select that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge. Didn't even have to rotate. I'll say new body and say OK. Now this is the same over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the mirror command once again. I'll do the features. Now, I personally don't know if there's really a difference between mirroring the features versus mirroring the bodies. I, I honestly don't know if one's better than the other. I should probably find that out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mirror the features. That way I could come in and change those if I wanted to. So I'm gonna say mirror plane, probe through that guy, say okay. And we now have, basically in just a few minutes, and of course I've been talking, so it takes a little bit longer, we've created the overall shape of this. In fact, if I turn off this original body, you can kind of see, and I realized I forgot a couple. So I forgot a pipe that goes down this side right here, and that side over there. Um, so let me actually back up and I'll create the pipe command and we'll do this right here new body say okay now I'm going to advance forward but my mirror you'll notice isn't correct over here because all I told it to mirror was these horizontal pipes so I'm going to go ahead and edit this mirror feature what are the objects? I'll come in and um, add in that feature right there. You can see the preview. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed this, we've updated in a fairly recent release, we've updated our preview to be much more realistic. It used to be just basically one face. It was kind of hard to see. I really do like this enhancement. I'll say OK, and I've just fixed my mistake. And now we have something that looks kind of like this. Okay, so is this the way to create this? It's one way. You could probably use 3D splines. You could have extruded rectangles and positioned those. I mean, there's multiple different ways. 
but I really like the pipe command because it's so quick and it follows existing paths. And we just used the um, split face command and construction planes to create those. And we now have this shape. And you'll see what's really powerful about this is we can change this down the road. Okay, so now I have all of these bodies. Well, if for a rendering, I, I don't want to have to deal with a whole bunch of different bodies. I want it to be just one. So I'm going to go ahead and combine. And I'll just say this top one's my target. What's my tool bodies? I'm just going to draw a selection box around everything. You'll notice it's set to join by default, and all of these are now perfectly join together. I'll say OK. And we're back to basically two bodies. So here's the original box. And then in fact I could even call this, you know, cage body or something like that. Oops, if I could spell it right. Okay. Now in the um, actual one is, and it's probably going to be hard to see this bottom lip is actually much deeper than like this is up here so I need to modify that so that way the glass has something to sit on so let me switch back to here so I could create an extrusion inside of here but I really hate that method where you're basically tracing over existing geometry and adding more geometry but I can't offset these faces because they're all interconnected. So I'm going to use that split um, face command again, right here. But to do that, I have to have a plane, something to use. So I'm going to go ahead and create an offset plane. I'm just going to go ahead and click on like one of these faces. Now you'll notice I get a warning. The object you are creating is not visible. And that's because I'm in my cage component, but I've turned off construction. In fact, if I expand that open, you'll see I've got a bunch of planes in there, but I've turned it off. As soon as I turn that on, I'm going to leave the distance to be zero. And you'll notice it's sitting right on that face. It's going to create that plane 5 for me, and I can turn these other guys off just to kind of simplify. So we've just created a plane on that face. I'm going to use the split face. Now here's another tip. Right here it says extend splitting tool. And notice it's turned on. And so watch what happens. You'll notice I did not grow my construction plane. So what are the faces? Well, I want to split that face, that face, that face, and this face here. You can get, basically going to split right along there. What's my splitting tool? I'm going to click on that plane, and you'll notice that it basically shows a large circle that encompasses everything. And it's expanded big enough, it's extended itself, to select all of those faces. So I don't have to grow my construction plane. Let me go back to the front here a little bit. I'll just say OK. And you'll notice there's now these faces are individual split off of these faces. And that allows me to come in and use a command such as, like, let's use offset face. And I'm just going to go ahead and select those faces. I'll probe through so I don't have to rotate. Probe through, like so. And now when I start to drag, you're going to see we can actually change the size of this. And I'm going to offset it um, according to my outline it says 0.45 inward so I'm going to type in 0.45 and say OK and now you can see we've basically created a little shelf okay. as we look at my um, timeline there's a lot of pipe commands and a couple mirror commands 
Well, I kind of know all of these commands here were used to basically create the cage. So I want to make this a little bit cleaner. So check this out. I can actually shift select all of these features in my timeline. I'm going to right mouse click and there's an option in here called create group. So I'm going to say create group and now it's one item in my timeline. You'll see there's a little plus symbol. If I hover over it, it shows me what's in that group. I can always expand that group to see it. Or I can hit the little minus and it helps kind of organize my timeline and keep it much simpler. Okay. Um, you can't really see it very easily, but there are some um, little tabs here that are used to hold this uh, lid on. So I'm going to create those next. So I'm going to create a sketch on the top face here. Create a sketch. And I'm going to draw a centered rectangle. Now I'm going to do it out here in space somewhere. So I'm just going to click, type in my dimension. So 0.6. And I'm going to purposely kind of make this a little bit smaller and just click right there. Again, I'm going to use that equal. I want that edge and that edge to be equal. Now why did I do a centered rectangle? Well, I want to add a circle right in the middle of this tab. So I now have a location that I can catch to and I want it to be 0.17 in diameter. And then finally, I want this to be centered along this edge right here. So I'll use the midpoint. I want the center of that edge to be at the center of that edge. And sure enough, we can see that my sketch is now fully constrained, which is good. Click on my profile. We'll extrude that down. And in this case, I want to go um, 0 0.08. So I'm going to say minus 0 0.08 in this case. And I want it to join. It's actually, I think it's kind of welded to this part. So I'm going to just say join, and we can see what that looks like. I want one on the other side. I could draw the sketch again, but that would you know, introduce errors potentially. So I'm just going to go ahead and mirror that extrude to the other side. So I'm going to grab that plane right there. Make sure I'm grabbing the plane, like so. Gives me a nice preview of what that's going to look like. I'll say OK. And we now have that tab on the other side. And believe it or not, we're pretty much done with this cage. Now, like I mentioned before, we want to do a really cool rendering of this. And one of the tips with rendering is to not have sharp edges. You want to have rounded edges. In fact, you can see just as I'm moving around how the light's reflecting off of these rounded edges and corners and stuff. And it just makes things look more realistic. So I want to, and in, in real life, I don't know if I'll be able to show this or not, the, the edges are actually rounded. You can kind of see even in the corner right there and stuff. So I'm simulating that in my rendering. So how to do that? Well, there's a lot of edges to select. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the fillet command. Usually I pre-select an edge, I right mouse click and I say fillet, right? That's kind of my normal method. But in this case, I'm going to start with the fillet command. And I'm just going to start by typing in, um, actually, I'm going to draw a box around the whole thing. Now watch what happens when I do that. It says it selected 75 faces and 292 edges. So what is it doing? Well, one of the cool things with Fusion is if you click on a face, like this top face here, it's actually going to fill it all of the edges that have to do with that face. 
Well, in this case, I really don't want to select all the faces. All I really care about are edges. So I'm going to clear that selection and show you a neat tip. I'm going to come under my Select menu, Selection Priority. And notice it says Face Priority or Edge Priority. So I'm going to say Edge Priority. Now I'm going to draw a box around it again. And notice this time it only selected edges. So that was under the Select menu. OK. So notice it selected 292 edges. That would have taken me a long time to select manually. I probably would have made a mistake etc etc so I'm going to type in the very small fillet um, in this case I want to do 0 0.05 now I type in the number and this makes me a little bit nervous nothing is updating and I get an error message it says the fillet chamfer could not be created where edges meet at a corner well why is that well I would bet you it's probably because this tab or these two tabs are fairly small and the fillet would probably destroy some of that. In fact, in the real <laughs> light, these edges are not filleted. So notice it says 292 edges. I'm going to hold down my control key. And I'm going to select these edges. As I'm walking around, I'm just going to select basically the planar edges, including these circular edges. So instead of 292, it says 284. Now I'm going to come over to this side. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to select that edge, that edge, that edge. And I'm just going through and clicking like so. And notice as soon as it's able to, the preview actually updated. Now I don't want the, um, the top of the circle would be filleted, so I'm going to select those guys. And now instead of 292, it says 276. But I get the nice result, so it's rounding over those corners. So basically I selected, you know, almost 300 edges just by drawing a box, and then I came in and unselected the few that I needed removed. And you can see we have really nice fillets in all the corners. I'll say OK. And it'll update. And that is all it took to create the cage. In fact, <laughs> we still have basically half an hour left. So we're going to create the glass that goes in there and make it look realistic. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I will call this um, patio light. OK. I'm going to create a new component called glass. I haven't really looked at the uh, chat too much, but I see some smiley faces, thumbs up. Oh, this is a cool trick, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are liking the. The tips and tricks. Um, okay, so I created a new component called glass. It's active, so you'll notice my timeline is empty right now. And I'm going to create a new sketch. So I'm going to say new sketch. And notice, well, actually, let me do it this way. I want to click on this face. And this is kind of confusing. I want to click on this face. And you'll notice I'm getting really weird flashing going on. Now, why is that? <laughs> and this is kind of a trick question. This happens all the time to people. They're like, how come it won't let me select a face? I can select edges, but I can't click on a face. It selects the whole body. What is going on? Well, remember, the last thing we did was we changed our selection priority to select edges only. So watch what happens when I hover over selection filters. Notice body faces, features, some of these are turned off. I personally usually always have select all turned on. So I'm going to click that guy. And now you'll notice I can actually click on the face. 
So the, the tip there was I had changed what my selection tools were able to select and it wouldn't let me select the face because I said don't select faces. So I had to turn that back on. So I just came into selection filters, select all. Okay, so now I can click on the face, create a sketch. It orients me the right way. I'm gonna create a centered rectangle. We're doing a lot of centered rectangles here. I'll type in, um, I think in this case it's 3.5 and I'm just gonna hit enter. I will use that equal command again. So I'll say that line and that line are equal. Now notice it's fully constrained. So this is good news. Now what I'm going to do next is I want to use the thin extrude option to create the thin walled glass. I could leave this as a solid and then shell it out. Totally valid, but I like to show some different functionality. So I'm going to create my 2D fillets. Now I typically don't usually create 2D fillets and you're going to see why. <laughs> so I'm going to click on that line and that line. It's asking for the size. So I'm going to add a 0.3. Now do not hit enter. If I hit enter right now, it's going to exit me out of the fillet command. What I can do is continue clicking and it's going to use that 0.3. So I'm going to click there, click there, but you'll notice this warning appearing and you'll see that my sketch is no longer constrained. And the reason for that is because these lines, you know, changed, right? Well, all I have to do is says constraints and or dimensions were removed during the operation. So all I have to do is put my equal constraint back. So I'm going to say, I still want this line and this line to be equal. And that makes sense because these fillets are all the same size. So I'll go ahead and click there. And sure enough, we've made it a fully constrained sketch again. So every once in a while, after you've you know fully constrained your sketch and you go and do something like add a fillet or a chamfer, you might lose um, some of your constraints and then you just have to basically recreate it saying this is what I want now after the change. So, okay. So I now have this profile here. In fact, there's two profiles. So I'm going to select both of those. I'll say extrude. How far? Well, I want it to go up to the top of this part. Now I could type in nine because I know that's what the overall height is. But instead, I'm going to say go to this object right here, this top face. So wherever that top face is, the glass has to be touching it. And that's what we'd want in the real world also. <laughs> so instead of typing in a distance, I said to object and I click that top face. Now it's a solid body. Here's that thin extrude option right here at the very top. I'm going to click on that. And you can see we now have a thin walled extrusion. Well, the glass is actually a little bit thicker than that. It's 0.15. You can kind of see what that looks like. It figured out the, you know, the inside fillets for me automatically. Could I have done this using just a, a square extrusion? Yes, but then I would have had to fillet the outside edges then I would have had to shell the part. So basically same amount of steps, but this is one feature in the timeline. Whereas if I had done the shell command, it would have been an extrude, it would have been a fillet feature, and then it would have been um, a shell feature. So it's up to you what, what you think is easier or better for you. Okay, we wanna make this glass. So, I'm going to hit the A key, A for appearance. I'm going to just hit A on my keyboard and you'll see the appearance dialog appear. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and then you can see all the different materials in here and one of them is glass. So I'm going to expand glass and we want to do some kind of a textured glass. So I'm going to click on textured and you'll see that there's like bubbles, clouds, frosted, lines, mosaic, etc. Well, 
this one kind of looks more like a noise. So I'm going to drag noise onto that part. And you can see it kind of changed the way it looks. And it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see all these little bubbles and stuff. They're fairly large. Um, in fact, let me... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there so you can kind of see what that looks like. And then I'll bring up the camera here. These, these are kind of smaller bubbles, and they're more random and stuff. I'm really not overly happy with the default one that's inside of Fusion. So we are going to modify this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a uh, Google page real quick. Oh, and it popped up on my other screen, so I'll drag this over. And I'm going to do a search for bubbles. <laughs> But I'm also going to use normal map, and you'll see why here in just a second. So I'm going to do bubbles normal map, and then I'm going to click on this images tab right here. And that brings up a bunch of different bubbles. And you can see lots of different options in here. Okay. Now I like this one here, Bubbles Rain. They're, they're kind of the smaller speckles with maybe a couple larger ones in here, whereas the default one in Fusion is just a bunch of large ones. They look more kind of like this, I would say. So I kind of like this one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna click on that image, right mouse click, save image as. Now I've already saved it, so I'm not gonna do this, but it would save it into my um, downloads folder. So you could do that with any of these images. You could try, in fact, let's try this one here. I'll right mouse click, save image as, just so we have two of them to play around with. Um, so I'll do that. So really quick way is to use Google and do this images search. Now, why am I doing this normal map? And you'll know that they're color, they're kind of colored kind of weird, but it's basically the depth of the object. And this will make more sense once you see it, but it's this is kind of how they define like mountain ranges in games. They use a, a normal map like this, and whatever is lighter is um, taller, and whatever is darker is deeper or whatever. So it's getting a little bit detailed there. Okay, so I want to change this appearance. So I'm going to hit A for appearance. And here's my two materials, the default material. And then here's that glass noise. So I'm going to edit this. And then I want to go into this advanced button. So I'm going to click on advanced. I'm going to stretch this window out a little bit so you can kind of see. And notice it says relief pattern right here. I'm gonna, and it's checked. So I'm going to expand that open. And here's the image that Fusion is using. And you can kind of see it's, you know, it's not really bubbles. It's almost more like terrain or something. I don't know. It's, it's, I want more like actual physical bubbles. So this little down arrow, it's kind of hard to see, but right next to it, I'm going to click on that little down arrow and it allows me to edit that image. It brings up a whole new window here which I'm gonna make larger so you can kinda of see and right here it says the source and this is where the default location is so I'm gonna click on these words right here and it will allow me to, here's where it actually is located, I'm gonna go into my downloads and I'll pick that normal map. Now watch what happens when I say okay watch kind of the image here when I say open you can kind of see how that changed and we actually have more like actual physical bubbles in the glass let's do that one more time with that other one that I clicked I'm just kind of curious to see what it looks like so I'll do that other normal map and yeah and so you can kind of see this is more of like a texture I would say probably not going to be very realistic for bubbles per se. So I'm going to go back to my uh, normal map there and I get that result. So I can change the default material. I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. 
and we've now changed what that looks like. Now it's kind of hard to see in the design workspace, so I'm going to switch into the render workspace. And this is where we can create more realistic looking materials. So you'll notice right now, this is kind of like an aluminum, but you can see we can see the glass a little bit better. And as I compare it to the my actual one, these bubbles are still a little large, so I'm going to change the appearance again. I'll say edit, and right here you'll see scale. And I'm just gonna click the little down arrow, and you can see how that image is updating. Because there's light reflecting, we can really kind of see what the size of those bubbles look like. And that is almost an exact match to the actual glass sitting right next to me in the, in the patio light. So I'm gonna say okay with that. Then I wanna add some kind of a material to the metal. And it's kind of a, looks to me almost like a powder coated metal. So let's see if I come in here um, a powder coat is kind of like a paint, so I'm going to go into paint, and sh yep, yeah, sure enough, powder coat smooth or rough. This is kind of like a sandy texture, so I'm going to go under smooth, and you'll notice there's lots of different colors. Now, this one doesn't have a down arrow, but the rest of these do. What this means is we don't install all of the materials when you install Fusion, because that would take longer to install, larger file size, etc. So you get to pick which ones do you want to download. So if I just click that little down arrow, boom, we now have powder coat blue. So just for fun, I'm going to drag powder coat blue onto that object. And I'm going to zoom up so you can kind of see what that looks like. And you can kind of see it's sort of textured, kind of bumpy. If we, uh, you know, you can kind of see how the light reflects off those bumps a little bit, and that's what really makes this look more realistic. Now these bumps are too big, and the color is wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in here and edit this material. And what's cool is you can, you can drag this around here and change, you know, to get to a color close to what you want it to be. So kind of a dark brown or something like that. I could also, if I know a specific RGB color. So in this case, I'm gonna type in 75 by 39 by um, 30 in this case. And that's kind of a dark, almost like a bronze, <laughs> dark bronze basically. Here's another tip if you didn't know about this. If you're doing a lot of rendering, you can actually click on this color libraries and we have all these Pantone colors so you could search for a Pantone number, or I could even say, you know, bronze or something like that, and it will bring up all the different Pantone bronze colors, for example, or violet or whatever. So we have the Pantone colors in here also. Okay. So I'm going to edit that one last time. I think the bumps are way too big, so I'm going to scale that down. And you can kind of see, I'm going to zoom up so you can see as I'm clicking, you can see how it gets smaller and smaller. And to me, almost like th around 30 is pretty realistic. It just has that slight sandy texture to it. But you'll notice how the light is reflecting off of it kind of in a bumpy manner right there. And that's the realism you see when we create the, the rendering. I'll close that. And then just for fun, Maybe we'll change our environment. Um, it's set to skylight, that looks pretty cool. Let me try, I'm gonna do like a warm light. Let's just drag warm light in there. You know what, I actually like skylight better. So let's do that. And then I could hit render and see what that looks like. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time waiting for it to render. Um, you saw one of the finished renders here and like I said, we'll continue on um, where we learn how to do the light bulb and the emissive lights and all that kind of stuff. We'll create the rest of this for the rendering and you can kind of see how it's creating these casting, sh you know, the shadows and the highlights, etc. So hopefully um, this was entertaining. You learned a new command that you might not use very often, the pipe command. 
Um, all it has to have is a path for it to follow, and it doesn't have to be a round pipe. It can be square. It can be, um, you know, triangle also. And by using the split face command, we're able to really quickly mock up what that um, shape looked like. And then here's where the magic happens. I'm going to come back into Fusion. I'll stop my render. You can see it's, it's rendering there. We're getting some nice bubbles in the glass. That looks so realistic. That just blows me away. Um, and that's only like 13 iterations. So I'm going to stop that. Let's go back into the design workspace real quick. I'll save. And at the very beginning, we created a sketch and then we created this skeleton, you know, this one block. So I'm going to change that extrude from 9 to like 6. I'll say OK. And everything downstream updates accordingly. And now we've made a smaller patio light or whatever. And even the glass because we said extrude to the top of this surface right here because that changed even the glass changed and because we used offset planes these are still the same distances and everything okay let me take a look hopefully Angela was able to answer a lot of the questions um, so okay it's always hard for me to <laughs> glance through and read the questions. I will try and answer them um, in the YouTube video. And like I said before, um, I will upload the outline. I mean, this is a pretty simple project, but I will upload the outline for you if you want to you know, follow at your own pace. Um, next time, we will create the sheet metal parts that kind of go around the rest of the, the patio light. So with that, I hope everybody had a wonderful time and have fun fusioning. Thank you.